There was a time that life began to subdue me. Life began to subdue me. I was struggling with lust. Our world is wicked. You turn to your phone, you see naked people. You turn to movies, you see naked people. You say, okay, you are no longer watching. You go to the market, you see naked people. What do we do? Should we go and hide in the bedroom? I will take three days and fast. The moment I'm coming out of fasting, I'm seeing a naked person. How are you? I'm looking for where they say big. You are looking for where they say big. It's in front of my house. Does this look like a shop? And the devil keeps sending arrows. Sending arrows. Lord, what do I do? I've heard people's messages. I've applied them. I've asked for counsel. No one is working. And the Lord told me, the answer is on your inside. Follow the promptings. Follow. Follow. There's a realm called the invincible realm. Follow. And I started listening. And the first place he started from, he said, forgive. He didn't talk about lust. Forgive. And I am a high-tempered person. If you try it, I tell you immediately. He said, no, don't respond. Forgive. Somebody will offend me. I will come and sit down and justify why the person should be the one to apologize. He just said, forgive. I will go with body and say, you know that thing that happened. You were wrong, but it's okay. <laughs> say, that's not what I told you to do. I say, forgive. Ah! Ah! I'll say, okay, when the next one happened, and I will ignore, I kept struggling. Until a point came, as I began to yield to the promptings, you will come as if you are dying, you say, sorry. The person will now look at you. I thought you say you, we will fight. I was ready for you. Ah. You will die. You will die. And God will not come and pacify you. He will not keep quiet. When you die, a measure of flesh will now die. Now, all of those strands of flesh are what demons coordinate together to build lust. But a superior teacher in wisdom is now training you. When he finished with that, he took me to another point. He said, give. People will come to use me. He will say, give them. Ah. Sometimes I will give and I will have nothing. He said, give. I said, Lord, are you trying to bless me? Is it about reward? We are not talking reward. We are saving your soul. And I kept giving. I kept giving. I migrated from there. I went to another level. He said, don't seek honor. Ah. They will come to a place you will hide behind for a long season. After he dealt with all of those things, he now entered prayer. I will sleep at night. He will wake me. He will wake me. Some people think to deal with lust is to start with prayer. That, play, that prayer can ride on your lust. Because now that you know you have uh, stamina in the place of prayer, you will now wait. When they are talking prayer, you stand up, you say, these people, they are not ready. Wait, let me drill them. Pride. We now anchor on that prayer. Everybody is praying. You are just doing like this. That means they are learning. They are learning. When I carry the mic today, then you now carry the mic. Ikobo, Avelo, Jazolo. Yo. The first... In the first five minutes, you want everybody to know the difference in atmosphere. You just want them to see first. Let them know the difference. Zebobula, Shababodo. When you now, when you now finish stratifying the atmosphere, you now pocket your hand and say, you see, this is what we have been trying to tell you. You will die in secret sin. Because that flesh, the devil will use that flesh in another corridor to kill you. It was after God dealt with a lot of things before he started talking prayer with me. And when I started praying, I knew what help meant. You will pray for 15 minutes, it looked like 10 hours. Shabba, shabba. He now told me, put your work clock by the side. We are traveling. We are journeying. Put your work clock by the side. 
That was when I knew the layers of ascension. Because he wanted to carry me to the presence. It's in the presence that transfiguration takes place. But life will be the one to help you go there. Because life will mortify. Light will renew. But only the presence transfigures. Because it's in the presence you were created. The substance of your making is in the presence. But it will take renewal of mind and mortification of flesh to enter the presence. And so when God was teaching me about life, the final corridor we entered was the journey to the presence. And we began. The first thing was to kill distractions. It took many months. That was when I knew prayer doesn't end when you say in the name of Jesus. As you finish saying in the name of Jesus, it will tell you to off your phone, your, delete your Facebook. Because it's fighting distraction. Those are weights pulling you down. As you are trying to ascend, they are like bags of stone drawing you down. Anxiety, fear, reproach, anger, bitterness. They are weights in the spirit. That's why I said to put aside every weight that doth easily beset you. It's in the corridor of spirit life that you will understand it. And I will struggle, pray for two hours. I'm still with bitterness. He will say, you can't travel. You are heavy. There is a wind waiting for you. And the eagle, it mounts on the wings. You can't find your wings if you are heavy. Alight yourself of buttons. And you will pray for hours. Pray for days. Pray for weeks until you are rid of buttons. When those weights begin to fall, then you know that ascension is about to begin. All of that is a technology of life. That's why I tell people, life, prayer is not judged by time. No, prayer is judged by ascension. How far are you going? Because you and I can pray in this room. One person will go to Zion, another person will remain here. It depends on how light they are in the spirit. Because when the eagle wants to ascend, he looks for the wind. He mounts it, he mounts it. But you are, if you are heavy, you can't catch the wind. And so what prayer will do first is to rid you of weights. You will be there praying in tongues. The weight is there. You will keep eating different boiling points. A point will come, anger will go. The bitterness will go. The malice will go. As they are going, you will now discover you will enter the second level. The second level is the realm of stamina. Stamina, not because you are there for long, but because you are focused. Because when distraction is taken, you zoom into God. You know that your prayer is beginning to go far. And as you are praying, you can be on one thing for four hours. Tata, rakakata, sadaka. Even when you stop praying and you go out of your house, your attention is still there. That means you are still praying. You have stopped the activity, but prayer has not ended. Because the, day, the moment you say amen, that's when God will start talking. And you will discover you have trained your focus. That focus you have developed is what we call spiritual stamina. And as you build on stamina, build on stamina, you will enter the third layer. That's the realm of charging. He said, you dearly beloved, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. In the realm of charging, what God does is that he brings supplies. That's when you can now sense the anointing, like oil. The oil will literally begin to flow. You can touch it. You now know that you are no longer natural. At that level, you become a battle axe. That's where your spiritual sense is open. You can be praying, and suddenly, the contract you are bidding for will open before you. And you begin to see what you need to do. You are no longer functioning with your mind. You have entered a heightened realm. Everything in you that is of God begins to open. Begins to open. Ah, that's when you start enjoying prayer. The first two is spiritual discipline. But this one is rest. Because sometimes as you are praying, the energy will come on you so much, it will break you. And you will find yourself on the floor. Ah, ah. Ah, ah, you can do that for four hours. It's no longer you praying. There is a spirit praying from within you. You have entered another realm. Sometimes as you are doing that prayer, the whirlwind wind will carry you and you will find yourself from your altar. Cha -ta 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 -ta. Barak, something is happening that you can't contain. Your courtesy goes away. Your composure goes away. Your coordination goes away. A lion is about to come out of your inside. Sometimes as you are praying, you will discover the heat will be too much. You will melt. In the place of prayer, you will melt. 
you will find your body squeezing. Squeezing. You don't know what is happening. God is rebuilding you. He's rebuilding you. All of that is life at work. Life will take you from distraction. Take you into focus. And then will take you into realm of fire. Where you are charged. And when a man becomes charged, all he's waiting for is God. Nothing moves him anymore. And then when you hit that realm, then the realm of the voice will open. That's when you will hear, come up here. Come up here. He said, I, John, I was in the eye called Patmos. And I heard a sound as of a trumpet. And as I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. He said in Revelation 4, 1, the same voice that spoke to me, he spoke and said, come up here. And as I turned, a door opened in heaven. These are technologies in life. Many have been in church, but they have not journeyed in life. There is a realm beyond the stars. And that's where our true fellowship is. When we gather here, we migrate. We don't stop here. That's why we worship. That's why we pray. That's why we share the word. We want to go to where true fellowship takes place. The fullness is a technology. It's a technology. And when you are done with the voice, then the judgments of God are committed to you. Because a man who carries the fullness is a judge. He advances kingdom. And that's why when you ascend the mountain, the next thing you hear in Psalm 24, he said, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, that the king of glory might come in. A man who carries the fullness is a kingdom functionary. Everywhere he comes, he establishes the government of God. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Did you not read about Jesus? He said the moment he talked about being the brightness of his glory, he said upholding all things by the word of his power. Our world will remain dark unless carriers of the fullness emerge. Our world will remain iniquity because iniquitous spirits are controlling the world until carriers rise. The, the demons are not moved by a preacher. When you show up, they look at you. They went to Jesus and said, if you are the son of God, turn this stone to bread. It's demons you cast out, not principalities. You think the person who sits on government creating corruption is a demon? Is a prince. You think two young ladies just woke up overnight and suddenly redefine beauty and think beauty is nakedness. You don't know that there are other teachers teaching in the spirit. Suddenly beauty is now nakedness. A whole world rises up and suddenly wants to redefine marriage. That marriage is between two adults. It mustn't be male or female. They suddenly became wise. They are princes. In every dispensation, the gates of Hades open and princes come to the earth. That's why we need carriers of the fullness. Those who can look at the princes and say, go back. And the prince, we have no choice. Those who can say, Lord, restore. And it must happen. Because when they speak, heaven back them up. It's called the ministry of the fullness. And that's why the ministry of the fullness begins with life, light, and then it enters the presence where men are reconfigured. So when that is done, we can bring kingdom. When you enter there, you are regulated by holiness. Because where the fullness of God is, is called holy. And when you enter holiness, only one will stands. Only one purpose stands. And when you insist that only one will stands, what you are doing is that you are establishing government. I don't have time to talk about light. So I wanted to stop only on the subject of life because every of us know life.